If you're a patient that comes into our clinic with the diagnosis of heart failure, one of your biggest concerns is going to be, what's my prognosis? You know, am I going to be okay? I can tell you that we in our heart failure clinic at Tufts Medical Center have the ability to diagnose uh, the etiology of the heart failure and really target treatments based on your specific problem. In simplistic terms, you know, there's an abnormal uh, functioning of the heart where the heart's not, not able to pump enough blood to meet the demands of, of the body's tissues. There's not enough oxygen delivery or nutrient delivery, so patients develop fatigue, um, shortness of breath, and, and can have uh, issues where they're, they're very debilitated from that. So you have patients that may have a problem with primarily emptying of blood from the heart, and other patients that will have a problem with primarily filling. Both can cause uh, significant morbidity to patients and mortality, and both can cause significant heart failure symptoms. The most common uh, cause of heart failure is coronary artery disease, where patients have heart attacks and can have weakening of the heart muscle. Patients can also uh, have a history of hypertension, can develop valvular heart disease. Patients can develop heart failure from viruses. There are many common viruses that can attack the heart. There are also toxins either from chemotherapy agents that can attack the heart and make the heart weaker. And also excessive alcohol use can cause heart failure. Some of the risk factors are things that your primary care physician should be doing. That's treating your hypertension aggressively with antihypertensive medications, treating uh, hyperlipidemia with aggressive cholesterol-lowering medication. Uh, if you're diabetic, really working at controlling your diabetes. Exercise is very important. So a lot of the primary prevention strategies are very important for decreasing the likelihood that you develop heart failure in the future. Most patients can do very well with heart failure, uh, patients can uh, be very functional, uh, live normal lives, and, and, and do very well with this diagnosis. Other patients that don't respond to medical therapy may continue to progress, and we need to be following them very closely in the clinic so that we could look at whether or not they'd be candidates for those more advanced therapies such as heart transplantation or heart pumps. Cardiac transplantation uh, is a great option for patients with end-stage heart failure that are candidates. And the selection criteria for heart transplantation is really to look at which patients are going to do best with the therapy. And there are a lot of patients that may have other comorbid disease states where they have uh, poor lung function, poor kidney function, poor liver function, other systemic diseases that would not make them optimal candidates for transplantation. And then there are heart pumps. And these left ventricular assist devices now have become very advanced to the point where we're utilizing them to treat patients who have refractory heart failure symptoms that aren't candidates for cardiac transplantation. And patients have done very well with these uh, uh, pumps and actually can have a very good quality of life the Heart Failure Center has really become, over the last 10 years, the premier program in New England. Uh, we're doing uh, more heart transplants and more left ventricular assist devices and caring for more patients than any program in New England.